and we see that life turn around and we see them transform, my friend, that will bring excitement into our lives and into our church. Just as a newborn baby comes into a home and brings excitement, nothing can stir a church quicker than seeing little babes in Christ born into the family of God. So if we want to see God fill this church with excitement and be used for His glory, then we must launch out and let down our nets for a draught. We must share the gospel message wherever we go. And we will see God do a miracle involving not only the fish, but the fishermen. He'll do a work in our own hearts. He'll grow us closer to Him. He will transform us and use us. There is nothing as humbling as, and as exciting as knowing God is using you in His kingdom work. It's a feeling unlike any other. So I notice a miracle involving the fish, the fishermen. But then I want you to notice lastly, and I'll be done, a miracle involving the future. And Jesus says, Peter, men, you've not seen nothing yet. Look with me in verses 10 and 11. It says in so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not. And he was, uh, he was afraid. He didn't know what he had just witnessed. But Jesus says, Fear not. From henceforth thou shalt catch men. He said, If you think it's exciting catching fish, man, just wait until it is souls that are being won to the kingdom of Christ. Wait until it is men that you are catching in the gospel nets. The Bible tells us that these men, they left their fishing nets behind and followed after Jesus. They left it all behind. God's called us to be fishers of men. When he does that, I understand that a, a vocational ministry is not in everyone's calling, but for some of us, it is. And it should never be said of us when God says, go be a fisher of men in that capacity for us to say, God, I just don't want to. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back to fishing. That's what Peter did uh, and after Jesus had been crucified. Uh, we find that... I, well, Jesus, after he'd resurrected, he goes and he finds Peter. Uh, Peter, he tells the boys, he says, boys, I don't know what you're going to do, but boys, I'm going to fishing. Uh, he's just running back to what he knew. And at times, I'm tempted to do that even. I'm tempted to uh, just, I, 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 it'd be so much easier. I, right now, honestly, I, this is just the honest truth. I could go to McDonald's and make more money than what I make as a missionary. I, I, so, I mean, why put up with it? Because God's called me to be a fisher of men. And, but because of this, I see a miracle involving the future. I, Peter's life was transformed. I, he said, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. And think about it. I, because he obeyed, because he forsook all and followed Jesus, you and I are here tonight. Think about it. old Peter, I, who bowed at Jesus' feet at, in this ship, later would stand up in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost and preach the Word of God. And when he did, 3,000 souls swam right into the nets. I, and then from those 3,000 souls, they picked up their gospel net and they cast it far and they cast it wide and they continued to catch men. And one by one, lives were changed, lives were transformed until one day that person casting the net caught you and I. We swam into that net. This is how it has always worked for the church. 2 Timothy chapter 2 says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. I'm thankful for the day that the net surrounded me and I had nowhere to go. I had to go to Christ. And because of the love and the joy that I found in my Savior, I'm thankful that He's called me to go be a fisher of men. And so now I get to cast that net. And it, at times, is it tiring casting it out and drawing it in only to catch nothing? It is. 
But if I draw it in and just one fish is in it, it makes all of the work worth it. Today, the net is in our vessel. And I believe that Jesus is telling us to launch out and let down our nets. And when we do, we will see a miracle involving our future. If we will go where Jesus tells us to go and cast where He tells us to cast, we'll see this church grow in ways that we've never seen it grow before. Our future will be far better than what our present is. And I'll be honest with you, church, I don't think our present is all that bad. But God can make it better greater and bigger stronger and more powerful I wonder if the Lord has spoken to you tonight about your own fishing if he has what's he telling you to do I think I might know I think he's telling all of us launch out and let down our nets the question this evening is are we going to do it are you and I going to be obedient to the command of our Lord? Are we going to stand in the boat and argue with Him? From the moment we are saved until the day we are taken home, we are to be casting that gospel nets. We are fishers of men. At times, we get frustrated with our vessel. <laughs> we do. At other times, we are tired because of the voyage. But if you and I determine to stick with it, He will give us a victory one involving fish, but more importantly, one involving the fishermen. He'll do a work in your heart. And you'll see just how much He truly does love us. Our Father, we thank You for the calling of Peter. God, I'm thankful that You called him into the ministry. And God, at times, he was tempted to go back, but Lord, I, if he were to go back, he didn't have a boat to go back to because he gave it up. Uh, God, and so we see that he left all, he forsook all, and he followed you. And God, he stood up the day of Pentecost, preached, and 3,000 men were saved, and uh, others later, and God, just one by one, as souls were be, being transformed, uh, eventually it made its way to us. God, we are grateful for the salvation that you've given us. And God, for the calling that you placed on us to go out and to reach others also. And what a humbling call it is that you've given us. And so God, tonight, may we just dedicate ourselves in service to you. May we rejoice in the vessel that you've given us. You knew what you were doing when you gave us the church. And so, God, we thank you for our church, and we pray that you will uh, encourage us through it, and God, help us to be an encouragement to others in it. God, we pray that you'll bless the voyage. And God, as we are embarking on what it is that you've called us to do, we pray that you will help us to be obedient, regardless of our doubts. And God, we will thank you for the victory that you provide. Lord, I pray that you will use this church. You've used it in the past, you're using it currently, but God, I pray for bigger and better things in the future. Lord, I thank you for this church's pastor. He's a dear friend. And Lord, I pray that you'll encourage him and give him the strength that he needs to man the vessel. Yes, Lord, as your under-shepherd. Lord, be with the crew, so to speak. If we're going to follow along this analogy, God, help each crew member to be active and engaged. Lord, may you continue to use us, and we will thank you for how you work. It's in Christ's name we pray. As we stand to our feet with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, as the music begins to play, if God has spoken to your heart this evening, I want to invite you to just take a moment to come to this altar and bow down before the Lord and say, God, I just want you to use me as a fisherman. Uh, God, I want you to use me as a fisher of men. God, I'm thinking of someone right now, and I want you to use me to reach that person for you. Uh, maybe it's a loved one. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a co-worker, a friend, a neighbor, whoever it may be. No doubt right now God has placed someone on your heart that needs to come to Him before it is eternally too late. And this evening, you would just like to come and bow down and say, God, I want you to use me in the call.
calling that you've given me to catch that person in my net. May I help bring them to you. Why don't you come this evening? Maybe this evening you'd just like to come and pray for the vessel. Thank God for the boat that he's given you. And at times we can get a little irritated with each other. We are a family. I can't tell you how many times growing up I fought with my sisters. But we're family. So there may be individuals that at times ruffle your feathers the wrong way and, and you don't exactly know how to handle it. And maybe this evening you just like to come and say, God, I just ask for your forgiveness. Help me to love that person as you love that person. We are the family of God. And God, we're in it together. We're fighting this fight together. Maybe you just like to come and ask God to give you wisdom and patience this evening. Whatever the need is, I do trust that God is working in your hearts. God's word is going out this evening, and I just ask that you be obedient and responding to God's word as he has laid it on your heart to respond. Do not leave this place if God is dealing with your heart. It's a wonderful thing when God speaks to us and challenges us and stirs us up a little bit. As I shared last night, it's God working in you. Don't fight it. Don't run from it. Yield to it and allow Him to transform you. Aren't you glad we're on the ship of Zion? Amen. What a wonderful message has been proclaimed. We have a job and a task. Each one of us has been called for a purpose. And my prayer is that I'm the sharpest that I can, that I personally can be for God's glory. Whatever that is, I want him to get the glory. I'm not comparing myself to anybody else, but I'm looking at Tim. Am I doing, am I being, am I allowing God to work the way that he wants me to be used? We sing one more verse. We sing one verse. Let's go. I've wandered far. message again tonight. Amen, church? Please remember, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Please remember, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, we will not have service on Wednesday because we're preparing for Thanksgiving. And not Turkey Day, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So uh, I'm grateful today that we have so much to be thankful for. I truly am. Just allow Brother J.D. and me to get back to the back. His legs aren't much longer than mine. I think they are a shade or two so it may take us a little while to get back there but just give us a little time y'all be dismissed just a couple things that I ask please be safe when you leave uh, when you're pulling out of this parking lot there's a spot down there if a car happens to be right in that that spot uh, it, it, it's very dangerous I've seen cars almost come to a 
big collision out here numerous times, and God's been, God's been gracious. So please, be, especially with it being dark, you think the, the lights would shine, but there's a spot out there that the lights just don't, it's hard to see. It really is. So please be careful as you leave. Uh, I know it's windy. I know last night we had some rain, uh, and God's blessing in a good way. Thursday night, you know what we may have? Snow. Snow. So we're excited about that, aren't we, Olivia? Aren't we? Just let me get back there to the back and you're all dismissed. <laughs>